Here's something everybody should do if they do location video or photography, if they can. You see the beautiful sunlight on the wall on the left there? Well, that's only there for 20 minutes at 7.20 in the morning, and the rest of the day, this location isn't that good. So the first thing I do when I get to a location, if I can, is I walk or drive around with my cell phone, and I take pictures of all possible locations that look good for photography or video. And I also note the time of day. I take out the little stylus pen that comes with my phone, and I scribble it right on the picture. If you don't have a stylus pen, you can just click for the information of the picture, and it'll tell you the time of day it was taken. Remember, the sun moves, so the good light only lasts for 20 minutes or a half hour at the most before the location has a completely different look. Whenever I go on vacation, that's the first thing I do. I did it in Maui. I took pictures of all the locations that I like. I did it in Bora Bora. Here's some great locations. I just walk around and I note the time of day and take pictures of locations. And sometimes I take the same walk, but different times of day so I can see the differences. This is all Bora Bora. Now here's an example how important the time of day is. Here are a couple of shots taken at the same location different times a day. Look at the difference. Time of day makes all the difference in the world sometimes. And when you have beautiful locations like this, you don't want to miss the opportunity to take a great picture. And Bora Bora was definitely full of them. So taking an hour and walking around is definitely one of the best investments as a photographer or videographer. And here are some location scouting pictures I took in the Seychelles. If I didn't take these pictures, I wouldn't remember all the locations. There's just so many of them, and they're all awesome. Lots and lots and lots of choices. So you go back to your room and you look at them, analyze them, and then figure out which ones are worthy of spending some time and effort to take pictures there. For once in a lifetime locations like this, doing a little bit of homework is definitely worth it. Here we are in Lanai, just a 45 minute walk around the property and I can take the pictures back to the room, show Kara and talk about it and she can help pick out the ones that she thinks would work. It makes life a lot easier when you know what to expect and what time of day to go do it. Or Oahu, I did it here in Oahu, I walk around and I note the different locations. Sometimes I even note when there's a lot of people there or not a lot of people there. That makes a difference too. What it looks like during sunrise, sunset, middle of the day, different times of day. I did it here in Sedona. I did it here in Death Valley. I do it around my own house. I do it around town. Every chance I get, I take a picture and note the time of day. So if I want to do a video or take pictures, I have a list of options to choose from. And it makes it easier when you have a model and you're lugging a bunch of equipment and clothes to go, okay, we're going to go here at 8 o'clock. We're going to go here at 8.15. We're going to go here at quarter to nine. We got it all mapped out. Now, I know it's not always possible for everybody to do this, but if you can, try to go there the day before and note the lighting and the time of day. Now back to this original location here. This is literally 20 feet from the last location that you saw in the last video with the fountain. And that's another thing to keep in mind. You might see a nice location, but if you turn in a different direction or go 20 feet, you've got a whole nother location with a whole nother look. And they're like right next to each other. I go for walks three times a day anyway for health reasons and to clear my mind and calm down and think about life. So that's a good time to look around and do this kind of stuff. So anyway, here we have this nice light hitting this wall at a certain time of day. So I came back the next day with Kara and uh, we took some pictures. The light bounces off the wall onto her face from the left. So I logically put a softbox on the right to try to soften up the shadows. In this case, I'm using the softbox as a fill light. And in many cases, fill lights are best to come from below. So here I put the softbox on the ground and you can use a reflector. With a reflector, it's kind of hard to adjust the amount of light. But with a softbox, you can really dial it in. So now I've got the light where I want it and I like the way the pictures look. I'm happy with this look here. This looks really nice. And we have a nice balance of light from the left and the right. And the shadows are softened up. And there you go. So keep this tip in mind. Whenever you go on location, when, or especially if you go on vacation and you want to do some videos or portraits or even a wedding photographer, go to the location the day before, if you can, and note the lighting and the time of day. And try to look at it at different times of day and find the best spots, note them down so you're ready to go the next day at exactly that time of day and you know what you're going to expect and you can set your lighting and your cameras up faster because you know exactly what to expect. It saved me a lot of time and worry and concerns because I knew what I was getting into. I knew what it was going to be like. Obviously you hope it's not going to rain or get windy or something. Anyway, that's my tip for the day. It really helps me and it would really help you too. Hope you like my channel. I'll see you in the next video.